Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF and on today's episode we're going back to Glasgow 1770 and checking out their brand new releases that they've just sent through to me for review. Now a couple of things before we get into this, uh, This I'm actually recording this on day of release because I've been waiting for the temperature in the UK to drop ever so slightly. I, I think probably one video, two videos every single year I make a little bit of a, a comment about this because um, we can't handle the high 20s in the UK. We we don't have air conditioning or anything like that, kind of generally speaking, in people's houses. So yeah, if you hear noises like that, maybe in the background of cars going past or whatever, I apologise. Uh, if I'm looking a bit sweaty today, again, I apologise. And if you can hear the fan that's blasting right at my feet right now, again, I apologise. But in any case, let's get on to this one and see what we've got. Now, we've actually got a duo on here today. So uh, if you want to track down below, there'll be some chapters that you can have a look at if you're interested in one or the other, hopefully both. But the first one up here then is the brand new to uh, Tokai cask. I always want to say Takaji because that's just phonetic. How it's, but I think even saying Tokai, technically speaking, isn't correct. So I apologise for that again. Lots of apologies today, but you know, pronunciations isn't one of my uh, kind of fortes per se. But um, yeah, this is an interesting one because I originally uh, originally got sample sets. Now this is actually batch two, same as the other one is a batch two. The first batches of these I had samples of. So I only really got a quick taste of it. Um, funnily enough, the Takai cask, I didn't vibe off. In, in fact, I'd probably say it's one of my least favourite of theirs. And I wondered if it was something, because it's not something I'd ever experienced before. So I went out and tried some other Takai finished casks, whatever, and found it to be all much of a muchness in terms of my palette not really clicking with it. So uh, it's been fascinating to go through this one, because, as we'll find out when we go into it, because... I, th I don't know if I'm coming around to it or not, or maybe it's just the fact that I've now got a full bottle that I can assess through. Again, probably a good reason why I don't really review samples, because you can't really get into a whiskey. Now, this is batch two, so a couple of key bits of information on here for you. Six years old, uh, it's 54.8%, sells for, I think, 59 quid in the UK. This is four casks, unpeated, uh, and it's into the first fill ex-bourbon barrels, and then it's finished with the Hungarian Sakai sweet wine casks for three years and six months. I always think that, that sort of thing is fascinating when, um, you know, I mean, obviously it is a finish technically, it's been in ex bourbon, then it's been in this, but three three years, it's been over, over normal maturation for a kind of, you know, minimum, sorry, not normal, minimum maturation, six months over minimum maturation in its finished cask. So calling it actually probably, if you're saying six years, the likelihood it's probably been longer in the Takai cast than it was in the ex bourbon. Interesting. I think probably the best thing to do is to get straight into it. Something else I've changing. Uh, I'm going to go into this. I'm, I'm going to do a review of it anyway. But I've just picked up this. I say picked up. They sent it to me. This uh, whiskey journal here. Now I've been after a good book. Now uh, until now, what I've been doing to give you a bit of uh, background information, I have this just um, just a normal. You know, actually this is a Cisco branded one. Uh, Moleskin. Uh, I like Moleskin notebooks. I just have this and I scroll in my little scrawly writing, and um, that's my, my cheat sheet for the videos. What I was after was something a bit more structured, and I've been through quite a lot of these things. There was this, there was this one years ago, it was long with a little binder that was fine, but um, it, it ran out too quick. So now I've got this, you know, if, you, if you're vegan, this is no good for you, because this is leather, I think, um, as, as good quality as it is. But this is a nice thick binder, it holds 200 in it, um, and it's all laid out like this that actually to be fair i'm going to talk about that in my in my review of it but uh, not not a huge fan of that but um yeah this is the that's this one here uh, and we've got these nice wheels which is not you know this is not unusual just, we've seen this before uh, and we've got another one here as well this is going to be the um the other one that i'm reviewing today but yeah so i'm going to be using that to do my tasting notes now rather than going uh, fancy with my tasting notes because you guys know that i don't like that um i like to stick to the basics that i can communicate vibes with you guys so that's what i'm going to be doing now now i have to be careful because i've got two down here let's just double check which one's which yep okay so in this glass then i mean look at that color obviously all these are uh, uh, natural colored non-chill filtered um you can see on my little color chart here if you can see it's a little wee dot up here uh, i'm not sure what we're calling that yet i might have to come up with names for each of these but um that's a problem for another day okay so yeah, colour's pretty good. We like that. Let's try the nose. 
Now for me, on my little wheel here, I've got um, it's it's quite like the the prevalent flavours. Let's say are kind of nutty cereal. It's very oily, and then there's you know mid-level ones of um, kind of woody floral. And I have I have marked it down as low-level sulfuriness, but I wanted to be clear that that's not an off-putting sensation for me anymore. Really, I'm sure if I tried it on some kind of deep sherry notes, then maybe, but. There's definitely a bit of kind of burnt match vibe to this. Okay, let's try on the palette. So there's, there's so much going on here. Now, the snapshot of it is that whatever I don't like about Takai wine, which I have never tried by the way, but in, on its influence with whiskey, that's still here in this. However, this far down in the bottle, I've managed to find a kind of like... I, I, my my brain now understands what's happening to itself. Like it's it's such a new flavour to me that I was struggling with it. And it has got that kind of aftertaste. But for me, it's it's right now. It's very sweet. It's very nutty. There's lots of toffees. It's very herbal. So uh, you know, it's almost like a you know you get these kind of like aperitif things. I forget exactly what they're called. It's a little bit like Jaegery in terms of its herbalness, not its flavour. But it's got that that herbal. I don't want to say like tea because it isn't really like tea, but it's. It, I am struggling to articulate it to be honest. But it it still blows my palate a little bit, and it's still um, got that that crazy aftertaste that I'm not overly keen on. But I will say that that's exactly what happened with like the Manzanilla cask uh, and the last Takai, and this one here. I'm definitely going to enjoy. It's. Um, it, I'll struggle with it for sure, but not in a kind of bad way. It'll be like a. I fancy, a, I fancy a challenge tonight kind of thing. And I'll go and grab a challenging dram because I have those. And this will be one of those, but again, not in a bad way. This will definitely get finished. But it's, um, yeah, I will. I think probably final thoughts on that one then. If you liked the Takai cast before, you will love this. You will. It's a fact. It's, it, it's, it's exactly the same in kind of concept to the previous one, if not slightly different in its flavour profile. Yeah. Okay. Let's get rid of that then, and we'll move on to the next one. Boom. Right. And we'll have a little swish. Okay. Next up then, we've got the Cognac Cask Finish. Again, batch two. Now, this one here is a marriage of five casks this time. So three unpeated and two peated. Two peated Cognac Casks. So, essentially, they're calling it lightly peated now. So it's not fully peated, I guess. Um, initial maturation with first fill ex bourbon before finishing in French cognac casks for three years, four months. Age six years, 58%, same price, that 59 quid. Now, do I have to say natural colour non chill filters again? I will. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to say previously, now on the, the labels here you get a lot of information, but on the boxes reaching down here you do get some cask information as well. Um, I'll let you pour if you can even see that um, for the nerds for the nerds and the cognac cask as well I'll put that in the description below if you're interested right so key thing to say about this one then is the previous version of this I really liked uh, and I've had various different cognac -y versions of theirs in the past as well which haven't lasted very long um, so yeah I might be going into this with a bit of pre-mind blownness. Um, if I look at the levels here, you can see, if I hold it relatively the same, you can see I've attacked the cognac just a touch more, and that will be the theme going forwards as well. Um, I probably won't be able to keep my grubby mitts off of this, but ever so slightly lighter in colour than the previous. Do a little side by side if you so wish using my nice white shirt, which I am not mentioning today, but if you know, you know. Um, right, let's get into the nose. Now this one here, I will show you this flavor, flavor wheel again. So this was the first one, if you can see all the little bits and bobs that go around there, it's really fine. Uh, and then this is the second one. So you, although it's slightly different, it's different enough to show you that it's like opposing, I guess. It's a similar sort of 
spread but opposing which is what I like about that it kind of visualizes what I'm tasting so for me whereas the previous one was all nutty and a little bit more cereal this one dampens those down it's still quite oily very woody but the smoke and the peat is more prevalent in this as well as the kind of fruity floral sweet which is superb it's yeah it's like everything I love in a dram to be fair Let's get onto the palette. Mm hmm. Ah. Oh. It's so good. It's like, okay, so it's a good mixture of smoke and peat. It's a little bit earthy and medicinal. Um, it's got some really sweet, nice notes on it those honeys, those vanillas. Still very oily and very. I say very, it's a little tannic, a little tobacco-y on the back end, but just superb. It's like, I mean, I, you guys know, um, I love 1770. Uh, I love everything they do, pretty much. So even when I get something like the Sakai cask, which I'll say is like one of my least favourite of their range, what I should really say there is that still, I mean, their whole range, if I was to give it like a, a whiskey base score, which I often do, I don't think I think I think probably the Sakai would would score maybe a, a, a mid to low 80s and everything else is above that into the 90s for sure. It's these are these are top quality whiskies for that kind of minimal aging. They're, they're really doing well. But for me like the the Sakai cask is is good value. This is insane value. This is so good. Mm. Yeah, can you tell I'm a massive fan of that? That's going to disappear real quick. There you go. That's the end of the review today then. So uh, let me know if you're going to be checking these out. I know that a lot of you guys are 1770 fans now. Uh, hopefully through me, you know. Um, obviously they send me these bottles. But I, uh, I very rarely say that I've got like affiliate links and whatnot. If you check out the description below, you can buy these through Master of Malt. Probably if they're in stock still. If not, go and buy them from wherever you like. Um, you know, I'm not here to... If you want to use those links, that's great. It does help me out, but I really don't care if you do or not. You know, it's up to you. You go you go and find out whatever you want. You watching my videos is more than enough. Maybe a like as well. You know, we like that sort of thing. But yeah, for me, I mean, out of the two of this, the, the Cognac is the clear winner. But for my palate, that's not a fair comparison. And I think most people would, would struggle to pick between the two. Because I know that the previous Takai and this Takai are very highly regarded amongst my peers so uh, yeah if um, if you were with any any doubt about these guys go and check them out if you were humming and ahhing about whether to get these or not i would say probably both of these are a buy especially if you like the previous ones definitely this if you align with my palette but yeah let me know in the comments below what you think of these releases or any of their other stuff or whatever whatever you want to chat down below that's fine i'll uh, i'll give it a go i'm gonna go and cool down and i'll see you again on more videos soon cheers I don't know. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put it in the, in the uh, what do you call it? The thingy below. Um, I'll put it in the description below so you can check that out if you want to. Uh, to give you a bit of backside information. Backside? To give you a, a kind of...